We've got about two minutes to go. Remember, we said if you are in the room already, please do. How are you enjoying the program? Um, we have the, got done a shout out for Rosina already. I see uh, Lindy Sipo Guga from King Williamstown saying morning. Kendi saying good morning from Rustenburg. Love it, love it, love it. Good to have you guys. Good to have you all here, especially the early, early birds. Um, those who arrive on time, we absolutely appreciate that as we always do. We're just admitting a few more people. Um, we're going to get started in about a minute or so. Wendy's in the house all the way from, where's Wendy from? From Kahito, Mohale City. Good to have you here, Wendy. Thank you for being here. Palesa say good morning. Um, Palesa's coming from Mahi Nice one. Nice one. Yes. It's so exciting to know that the weather's getting better. Um, we can feel that spring yeah. is on the horizon. By our next webinar, we will be fully into spring. And that's something to look forward to. So it's so nice to sleep without the, the electric blanket or the heater. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You don't, we don't need it at night. We're going to give it another minute just because we, we don't want to start without everybody. But we will start on time in about one minute from now. In the meantime, welcome if you are just making your way into the webinar room. All we're doing for now is just saying hello in the chat. Say hello, tell us, tell us how you're feeling. Um, we're just waiting for a couple more people to get in and then we will start in another minute or so. Have you, Sandile? Welcome into the webinar room. Um, always good to have you. Remember guys, let's keep um, videos, um, especially microphones on mute for the duration of the webinar, just because that encourages us and helps us have a great experience um, for everybody and just minimizes the interruption. And so please just keep your microphone on mute until we open it up for some discussion. And then you are most welcome to unmute yourself. But I think we are about ready to begin. Kosha, are you, do you feel like you're good to go? Yes, indeed. I think so. Let's, let's kick off right away. Wow, 10 o'clock on the dot. How great it is to be able to start on time. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are um, in the room, that means you are part of this amazing program that has been put together by the Assista Foundation. It's called Alpha and Biz. And it is webinar four already. Where has the time gone? It feels like it goes so quickly. And before we know it, we're here again. I think we saw each other, what, two or three weeks ago, but it's really flown. My name is Darren August. As always, I'm not alone. I have my special and beautiful co-host with me, um, Kosha Mplongo in the house. Kosha, do you want to say good morning? Cool, I'm sure she'll make her way back in. All right, so we're going to kick off in just a moment. Let's give Kosha a minute just to um, get back into the webinar room. But this is webinar four. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the business model canvas. We're going to be talking about my biz goals. And we're also going to be talking savings and investments. And we have a special guest who will be joining us. I'll introduce him a little bit later. But for now, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for um, being on time. And again, thank you for participating in this program. It's absolutely great and exciting that we get to have so many of us um, really, really investing in ourselves and in our personal development as business owners. That's what this program is all about. And so, um, uh, just Porsche, as soon as you're in, just let me know that you're here. But in the meantime, please remember just a couple of um, things that we need to highlight again. Please remember that as a participant, you need to at least attend six out of the eight webinars, all right? Um, we're at the halfway mark now, webinar four, but this is where we're going to be looking at accumulated points and the busy box incentives will be dispersed before we move to webinar five. So incentives are going to be going out this week or after this webinar, so that's very important. But please, in order to pitch at least the minimum of six of the eight webinars. And so... Often what happens is that with time, um, as the program goes on, attendance starts to, do, to dwindle. But please, please remain committed. Remember, this is for you. Okay? And so, um, very, very important that you do that. Porsche, just let us know. Is Porsche back in yet? I've just accepted her. Uh, please give her a minute. In the meantime, while we're waiting for Porsche, I'm going to put up the webinar calendar just to give you guys a, a, a look of, of the roadmap and see how it's going and where we're at. So today we are at webinar number four. So right, we're talking business model canvas and my biz goal. And then our next one is going to be on the 8th of September. We're going to be talking about marketing. And then webinar six and seven, 
in um, at 29th of September and October, we're going to be talking financial. So that's going to be quite important. And then um, in November, we're going to be touching on compliance before we close off the event and the, the program at the end or in November the 17th. We will be doing the business presence. Remember um, that the pitches are going to be happening on that day. Just a reminder as well that you should have been, you will be engaged by your coaches. Please remember to participate in the coaching programs. Please take advantage of those sessions. As we've said so many times before, it is free to you, but it's not free. These are very, very valuable and expensive um, resources. And so make sure that you are utilizing it. It's only going to benefit you. All right. Okay, we'll just continue. All right, so today's webinar, well, this is what we're going to be discussing. We're going to be discussing the business model canvas, all right? So we'll talk about what the business model canvas. We're going to be talking about the nine elements of the business model canvas, which you would have already received. Then we're going to be talking about business goal setting, all right? Remember earlier on in the program, we talked a little bit about personal goals. Today, we're going to be diving deep into business goal setting. And then we're going to be talking savings and investments, and that's where our special guest is going to join us um, to talk to us a little bit about savings and investments. All right, and so um, we're going to be talking about the nine building blocks um, that are part of the business model canvas, which Porsche will introduce shortly. So right, let's start off and introduce um, the business model canvas, which is going to be the first part of our webinar. And so um, when we think about the business model, the, the business model canvas, you would have received this already, but just to explain what it is. So the business model canvas gives you the structure of your business literally in one page, all right? So if you think about a canvas, it's you literally mapping out your business plan on one page. And so the business model canvas describes the rationale of how your organization yeah. creates, delivers, and captures value, okay? And so I want you to think about it. Effectively, it's used as a goal setting and planning tool, and it also captures the essence of your business plan in one page. Okay, so that's key, and that's what we're going to dive deep into. Kosha, you can take it away and talk to us a little bit about um, what exactly the business model canvas entails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is how the business model canvas looks like. It's like a one page. Uh, but it actually captures uh, the essence of your plan. Uh, you know, we always see this thick uh, living documents. Uh, we say they're business plans, but actually with this one pager, uh, you can actually plan everything that has to do with the key important elements of your business. Like you said, the business canvas has nine building blocks and we'll just go through them um, individually. But I also just want to acknowledge um, uh, the strategizer um, will share the link with the guys. So just note that this is a BMC template from the strategizer. And for more information, please check the link below. I always use it um, if I want, when I want to write my BMC. So the nine building blocks, are, you can go back maybe to that template so the guys can see. It's customer segments, it's your value propositions, it's channels, it's customer relationships it's revenue streams, it's key activities, it's key resources, key partnerships and cost structure. And this is very essential for every business. It doesn't matter you're in manufacturing, you're in service, or you're in retail, this applies to, to every business. So um, because it's nine of them, and we have information on the manual, I'm gonna go through the most important one that I think for pitching, they are very, very crucial. The guys need to understand when they're Talk about customer segmentation. What does that mean? I think before before we jump into it, it's very important to, to um, one of the things that I just picked up that Porsche said is it doesn't matter what kind of business you have, what industry you're in, you are able to do a business model canvas because it's it's unique to your business and it's activities that you still have to do in order to really, really plan and map out your business. And so let's jump into it, Portia. You can take it away with the first one, which is customer segments. Yeah, so we talk about customer segments. Very important, you need to understand your customers and know them. And this you can accomplish by doing your research. Usually when you start a business, even if it's, uh, it's, like it's just an idea, this is where you go. You first want to know that the product that I want to sell, who is going to buy it? You know, who are these people? Do they even have money, you know, to, to buy my product? Where do they come from? How old are they? So if you're selling, uh, let's say, wigs, uh, you can't go to Sasa and go look for a class. Yeah, you know where the pensioners and the, the, the money. 
uh, uh-huh. you know, pensioners don't want. That may be probably not your market, but you're going to go to places where young people, young ladies hang around, where you can find them. You know, um, so it's things like that while you do your research, you need to understand your, your customers. And then pro- the process of customer segmentation is actually you're dividing your, your customer base into distinct groups. And this makes it easier for you to target specific groups of customers with tailored products or services and different marketing strategies because now you know how do I reach these people. But if you don't know them, if you are not specific about the target, you're not going to know how to do it. Because, okay, these ladies, where do I get them? You know, online. But if I'm selling uh, scarves for old ladies, do you think I can find them on Facebook? No. You know, so when you know your customer, it's easy to actually know what marketing strategy uh, you want to follow. Yeah. So I, I think, Derek, maybe throw it, throw it to the group. <laughs> Absolutely, that's what I was going to do. So um, let's have, let's give an opportunity anybody in the room who wants to just tell us a little bit about your business and who your customers are. Tell us how you thought through that process. So um, if you could just raise your hand, we want to know who are your customers. How how did you come up with the fact that you've identified them as your customers, and how have you segmented them? So anybody who feels brave enough to share, this is your moment to showcase your business. Rachel, your hand is up. You can unmute yourself and um, you can share. I think I see Albra there. I don't know if you're raising your hand or not. Rachel, oh. you can go first. Do you remember to unmute yourself? Are you selling masks, Rachel? <laughs> you are still on mute. Please unmute yourself. Rachel, if you can just unmute yourself, please. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, now we can. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. Um, my name is Rachel Mayaka. Um, the customers in my business, it's mostly parents because I supply lunchbox for school kids. And the reason why I would say parents is because I need to convince them to use my service so I can provide healthy lunch packs for their school kids. Beautiful. Right. So that explains, does that explain the mask you were wearing earlier? <laughs> You know, I have a bad flu, <laughs> so I'm attending classes, so I have to walk outside to treat just me. Hello, thank you. Thank you for your commitment. I mean, I'm just being silly. Anyone else? Anyone else? Let's know who are your customers? How have you segmented your customers? How did you identify who your customers are? Push up with the any other hands to show? I don't see any hands. Anyone else? Come on, guys. If you can you check also that side? Um, Albra. Albra, um, she keeps saying it's her. Albra. Albra, do you want to go okay. for Albra, go for unmute yourself? You can, you can unmute yourself. Good morning. Morning, go ahead. Morning. Morning. Because we make organic, natural, um, um, handmade soaps, our customers are children, even infants, and newborns from that we do our own the skin and our customers they the youth from sixteen up until twenty five years of age. And then we have the woman in the working sector from 35 up until 45 years of age. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. I love how you've explained your customers inside. Yeah. For sharing. All right, let's move on. And so the next, the next part of the business model for Canvas is your value proposition. And so when it comes to your value proposition, you have to we've actually outline the steps here. So number one, you have to identify the challenges that your customers face. And so if we think about, um, who was the first? Rachel, for instance. So she's identified the challenges. So parents don't have time to put together lunch boxes or parents don't know what is healthy. And so she's identified that challenge already that a customer's face. Then what you do is you need to make a list of all of the benefits that your product offers. So again, she's probably identified the benefit is it's saving you time, it's saving you money, it's saving you having to do the research on what is a healthy, what is a healthy meal. Then describe what makes these benefits valuable to your customer. All right. Then what you need to do after that is you need to link the value 
to your buyer's problem. So you need to showcase how is your product or your service going, how is this value going to solve their problem. And finally, you have that you need to be able to differentiate yourself as the preferred provider of this value. But I think Porsche is going to dive a little bit deeper into value proposition. Yeah. yeah. And I think this is, uh, uh, for me, the value pro proposition is going to be very important because this is where you communicate how your product or service fills a need uh, and how it stands out from similar products in the market. And I think when we do the pitching, uh, when we are pitching and people are listening, the panel is listening, that they want to hear your value proposition. Why is it uh, you're, you're, you are better than other uh, businesses in the market? And why would people prefer your product? So this is really, really going to be very important during the pitching time uh, on the 17th of November. So there are three elements to the first part um, uh, of uh, when you are writing your, your value uh, uh, what is this, your value proposition. Uh, so you should describe the benefits your customers will receive as a result of buying your product, like you said. So you need to understand the customers again. It goes back to that. And it has to be fun, catchy, uh, meaning it must be memorable. You know, I always never forgot the Kellogg's um, catchy phrase, snap, crackle, and pop. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you remember it. Yeah, absolutely. You, so you the things age. like that, that stands out, you know, you never forget the brand. You know, like McDonald's, uh, I'm loving it. You know, things like that, you never forget those things. That's why you see a lot of brands use that. That's part of your value proposition. And then the second element is where you explain in detail what your company offers and who are your customers and why you do what you do. So even when you're talking to a new client or a new supplier, this is how you, 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 you communicate your business, you know, your profile. So, but you start with that catchy thing, you know, why do people buy your product? Why is it different from other people? All right? Yeah. And then the third element, is, you know, nowadays we've got Facebook, we've got on, we're buying online. So using pictures, videos, you've already said something about your product, but now we want to see something that can draw attention. I mean, if you think about it, Darren, have you seen a billboard and then you're driving and you're like, hey, you know, because of the infographics that are there, they catch you, they draw attention. And then you see also a lot of that you know, on websites, signage and ad 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 advertisements on TV. You know, there's always like showing some story, but using videos and um, and catchy phrases. Yeah. I love so that. those are very important when you're communi communicating your value proposition, just knowing how to sell yourself. So this is what we're going to be waiting for. And I wanted people maybe to tell us of catchy phrases that they remember, you know, tell us a brand and then tell us what um, the catchy phrase is. Maybe we can have some comments. So in the comments, maybe type and tell us about yeah. some of the brands that come to your mind. But I think this is a really important part of the business model, Candice. And so let's open it up again and let's give at least one or two people an opportunity to just tell us your specific value proposition. What makes you different? What value do yeah. you add to your customer? So let's have, we'll give one, we'll give two people the opportunity. Oh. Anybody? Who wants to do this? I see. I see. Raise your hand. Hi, Nike. Yeah, absolutely. Good one. Um, I see a hand raised there. Wendy, Wendy, you can unmute yourself and you can chat. Okay, good day. How are you? You're all good. Hi. So, uh, my business is Ubu Shebenu Bien Queen. So, um, with our value proposition is that number one, we are very affordable and we accommodate any kind of um, color of your skin. We are able to identify your skin and assist in terms of your skin color. And what we're also different about is that we do not assist people that are insecure with scars uh, in their faces, but we want to we want you to show, we want you to, to have more, like, what can I, how can I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how can I put it, but we want, uh, our value proposition is not about insecurity, people that are insecure about their skin or to maybe hide something. We just want your your face to lighten up and experience the, 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 the beauty of makeup. So what we focus on, we focus on weddings, we also focus on graduation, some of them, with the graduation it, it helps because now you just someone's natural so we do focus on being natural as well i think beautiful thank you yeah. 
Thank you, Dr. Nixon. Let's go to uh, Molokhadi. Molokhadi, you can unmute yourself and tell us a bit about your value proposition. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Molokhadi. And then my business is uh, Subsam Peter Jewelry. So my value proposition is that as a designer of Peter Jewelry, I assist young and middle in creating their own unique and handcrafted pieces. So it allows them to express their individual style and personality without sacrificing a, a, a quality or affordability. So, and then with my expertise and guidance, so my clients are able to achieve a customized that is both fashionable and timeless. Thank you. Beautiful. So well articulated. Those were really two great examples. Thank you guys for sharing. Absolutely beautiful. Pusha, was there anything you wanted to add or something? Yeah. Oh, there's MT and everywhere you go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and I was just saying that you, you see how is it Mukhari that just explained now. If you can take what you just said um and put it in you know, just just by keep writing it until it uh, it's catchy. You know, exactly what you're explaining about your clients, but look for words that you know are going to be uh attractive to your clients they will you know, you know that you will catch the attention so i like what you said but just to phrase it in a nice way so that even the day when you write your pitch you can use i like the way you did it so that's the that's the part just that you need to rewrite it and practice it so that when you meet your clients if they ask you what do you do you know or if you go to an expo somebody's asking you what do you do when you explain it uh, properly and with confidence yeah so you need to practice your value proposition Practice it so that you don't, uh, you know, start when you're telling people what you do. You're just telling it straight. These are my services. This is what I offer. These are my customers. Um, straight to the point. And you'll see people will take you seriously and they'll understand exactly what you do. Yeah, Sterry. Okay, so the next part of the business model camera, the next element is channels. And so channels refers to how is this product or service promoted? sold and delivered okay so which channels are you going to use and then also why why are you choosing those specific channels and also is it working is it the correct channel for your product your service and to reach your customer of course i know you want to you wanted to add to that yeah yeah so i wanted to just say uh, yeah uh, channels is where you describe your company and how it communicates and reaches the customers to deliver your value proposition. So you must think of ways to connect with your customers. So this is how you're connecting. That's why we've got there are those color things, their digital marketing, content marketing website. So everybody, when they start their business, the first thing they think about, how am I going to now get customers? You know, I've tried, you can do posters and maybe it doesn't work. Okay, maybe I must uh, start a, a, a Facebook page, you know, showing my products because pictures do help, like I said. You know, so customers can do this through a shop, people decide, I want a shop, because I mean, if I have a shop, people will see there's a lot of people passing there, it's busy here, and I'm going to put a signage, this is how I'm going to reach my customers. Other people who are selling products would say, oh, I'm going to go to the farmer's market every month. Uh, I'm selling um, scented candles, I'm selling honey, and what, and, and I still have another side hustle. I can't do this every day, but I'll attend market days. You know, this is how I'm going to reach my customers. Other p people like us who are running consulting businesses, we do meeting engagements. This is how I reach my clients. You know, I make an appointment with somebody, meet them, and we talk, talk, then we, we move our business, you know, from meeting to actually doing or product, pro uh, providing a service. And this is where you reach them directly, when you have shops and all that stuff. And then there's other avenues like your YouTube, your online package, your Facebook. Here you can access your customers 24-7. I think we are right there. Because sometimes you wake up in the morning, you find a message on LinkedIn. And when you look at the time, it was um, 12 o'clock midnight. And that's a client. You know, they just notice your profile. They write you a message. This is my email. So you can actually access your clients 24-7 um, online. During this. That's why I'm thinking, even if you're old school, uh, it seems like you don't have a choice. So you have to all go online at some point because I think you can access a lot of customers through online. Yeah, absolutely. Then the next section is the is customer relationships, and um, we can go ahead, Portia. Yeah. So how do you interact? Um, you know, with 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 your customers, very important. Uh, and I mean, this talks to selling yourself, but also to how you interact 
uh, with your clients. You know, you say thank you, or you are moody when they come in. I mean, I've you've gone to shops where you find it's at the person doesn't want to talk to you. You know, even if the person is not the uh, the person selling in sales is not the owner. So you need to train your staff because they are the ones interacting with your customers. You know, so you need to understand how to even feedback. This stuff you also gain feedback. So my customers uh, bought um, my wigs or bought my soap um, and they've been using it for three months. Do you ever go back to them and ask them, how, how, how was my product? You know, is it working for you? You know, and feedback, you'll find out more and, and, and call your clients, email. You can do that through email. You can do it face to face. You can do surveys and ask people questions so that you see if um, um, and you're building a relationship that person is going to come back because you can see that you care you know they're giving you money you're giving them a product or a service but you still need to build that relationship because we want them to come back and we want the customers to sell our businesses so if you don't build those relationships uh, it's hard to get repeat customers but also it's another way if you have a, you've got a good relationship to sell your business Customers always tell other people about your business. No, I'm using this product and it works. And the lady is so nice. You know, she called me after we week using the product. And then when I came in, she looked at my sister, she told me I look beautiful. You need to, you know, I was laughing yesterday when we talking about white lies. Um, if yeah, white lies are good or, or bad thing. Uh, but I'm saying if you are a business person, I'm sure you tell a lot of white lies just because you want to keep a customer. But don't do that. <laughs> so I'm saying, but you need you need to be that good uh, entrepreneur you know always uh, uh, keep that relationship going with your customers because you without them there is no kitchen kitchen oh please say absolutely there's a beautiful saying that says the best person to bring you your next customer is your last customer and i think that really yes. speaks to the fact that word of mouth can really really help grow your business and then the next section is revenue streams Portia. Yeah. So here, how does your business earn revenue from the value proposition? Um, I like the, the, the second lady, I forgot her name, Heidi. I think she mentioned uh, different streams, uh, but also it was Elbra. She also mentioned different streams. So usually you'll have a business, but you find that you've got different streams of, um, you know, you, can, you make your money from something else. You're selling this, but you also provide a service. You know, so we also, uh, I, I like it. I think and most entrepreneurs have different revenue streams. You start with one, I don't know, there's something that when you're an entrepreneur, you just, and we talked about it on our, I think our second webinar, uh, at the FNP, uh, we always identify opportunities. But also this, uh, you must list, uh, that, that list of different uh, streams, um, you need to know how, uh, you, there's different strategies to every stream, you know, and also how you uh, separate. I think we'll get there and we'll see in the next uh, session, we'll get to how you actually uh, separate the uh, finances from those different uh, revenue streams. So there you could be making, I think, well, let's make an example with Uber. Uber is making uh, money from the drivers. It's making money from the riders. You know, those are different streams, but it's one business. Can you see that turn? So they can make Absolutely. money from the, the drivers, they make money from the riders. Now they make money from also uh, parcels. You know, they deliver parcels. You know, there's Uber Connect. You know, yeah. there's Uber uh, riding. There's Uber. The driver itself, you know, um, yeah. they also make money through that. Yeah. I think so there's a lot of these are the different revenue streams here. I think it's important um, for, for business owners to realize that within your business, you need to be able to identify those. So if, uh, maybe another example would be closer to home, something like a hair. So if you're a hairdresser, why are you good at doing hair? There's an opportunity for you to make money from the service of doing the hair, but you could possibly sell products, like the products that you've used, you can now have one or two available in your salon, and people can walk away with a nice hairstyle plus a product to maintain that hairstyle. Plus, you could sell a comb or a brush or a tool. And so those are all various revenue streams that you could identify within your business. The next one is key activities. Yeah. So this is important. This is your operations. You know, what do you need strategically in a business do to deliver like product or service? So usually this confuses people, but these are your operations. So if I'm running a kitchen, I'm selling a quarters, I'm selling fish and chips, I, I'm delivering somewhere. What are my key activities for the day? So I'm just going to make a simple example. My key activities, if I'm running that uh, outlet, 
to actually order those uh, 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 plastic uh, dishes that they used um, to dish mm. up. It's, uh, it's cutlery. I must buy groceries. Those are the activities that are happening. I need to go order. It's an activity. I need to cook. That's an activity. I need to go and buy spices. It's an activity. So those are the operations that happen in my business. Delivering. I need to go deliver to the school. Deliver the food to the school. That's an activity. So those are your operations happening in the business. So and every business has it. It doesn't matter if it's a service. If I'm going to train, I have to, I have to know that I have to be. And we have to prepare for the slides, men, Karen, we have to have a meeting. Those are the activities that we need to do every time we come into the webinar. You know, we must meet, we must talk. Those are our we activities. We must check the load shedding schedule. we deliver the webinar. Huh? <laughs> and we must check the load shedding schedule as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so let's, uh, let's throw it up into the floor again. Um, so what would be, for instance, if we think about a business like, let's say chicken lick. That go into yeah. chicken licking. But again, if anybody wants to type in the chat and tell us what are some of the key activities in your business, um, we're going to pause for a moment and give you that opportunity as well. Tell us, guys, it would be interesting. <laughs> Munaro says adding salt is a key activity <laughs> <laughs> for chicken licking. <laughs> No, I think the activity is actually uh, making the chicken. It's an activity cooking that chicken. So, and cooking would obviously include like the spice, the exact spice that they use, you know, for chicken bacon. So that it's always not, because it must be the same. It can't change things. It has, to, it has to be consistent. So an activity is actually frying that chicken. Yeah. Following the recipe. Absolutely. Let's move on to the sake of time. Wendy, Wendy, did you want to add something you can go first? Yes, with um, with makeup, our unique uh, or kiss activity is uh, how you blend. You must make sure that you blend your customers so that the makeup or the powder, let me say the foundation, can go with the skin. So you must make sure that you blend them. So our key strategy is blending. Okay, but what are your what are your key activities in your business? So if you think about, if you were now booked to go and do somebody's makeup for the day. What are the key activities that goes into delivering that service on that day? So not just not just doing the makeup, but what activities grind the business? Oh, okay. So no. So having the yeah, I think is I'm, I had a network problem there, so I was just rushing in and I decided to be like pass to pass to pay. But I hear your question. Um, I would, I would, I would try to say um, making sure that you're on time, making sure that you're on time as a makeup artist, making sure that you're on time so that you can do your a proper work. Okay, so great. I, I wanted to help to help with this. So I happen to be in a makeup So the key activity in the makeup business is things like making sure you have your, your brushes are clean, making sure you've got the yeah. right brushes, making sure you've got the right the right colors for the client, for doing research ahead of time, making sure your makeup chain is right, all of those things, making sure you purchase your lashes, <laughs> it's going to be adding lashes onto the person's face. All of those activities that it takes to run the makeup business, the invoicing, all of those business. Wendy, can you mute, please? I think somebody needs to be muted. There. I okay, think Kuri so said uh, buying the chicken, hey, and she's right. Um, if they don't buy chicken, you'll go to chicken. They can get there. We don't have chicken today, so that's the most important important activity: buying the chicken, frying the chicken, packaging the chicken. But those are the activities that happen, uh, and stocking, making sure there's enough stock here. Yeah. Those are the activities that are happening here. Absolutely, Sandile, you've got a comment, let's go. Yes, Sandile. Okay, let's mute Sandile. We'll have to come back a little bit later. So your, your signal's a little bit. We can't hear you clearly. So let's go to you. You can unmute yourself and let's hear your comment. Good morning, everyone. Hey, keep going. Um, my name is Pearl. So I do wine business. My key activities mainly yeah. is the purchase of the wine and the making of the wine. 
the availability of stock yeah. and being able to meet the demands. Um, secondly, it goes to the branding and the packaging of my yeah. products. Mm -hmm. Without all those things, I don't think that the business will be yeah. running successfully. So yeah, with me, that's that. <laughs> beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I love that. That's if you guys, um, it's great that we're starting to think about this and having discussions because I think these are very, very important, especially as Portia said later on, when you have to pitch your business, you have to be able to understand the various elements of the business model, model canvas. Yeah. But obviously, we can't give everybody an opportunity. Let's move on. And so after key activities, the next part is key resources. And so when it comes to key resources, you need to answer, what do you need to bring your value proposition to life? Okay. So what is it going to take for this business to run? What are the necessary inputs for your business model? And then also, what assets or capabilities do you need to have in order to make your business model work? So we think resources could be, do you need staff? So what people do you need? That's a resource. Time is a resource. How much time is it going to take for you to deliver? Another resource could be money. How much money do you need to buy your stock? And then another one could be things like equipment. What equipment do you need in order for your business to function? Those are all examples of key resources. And so on your business model, canvas, you need to be able to identify the key resources. And then the next one is key partnerships. So what type of partnerships does the company need in order to deliver on key activities? Yeah. And so when you think partnerships, this could be things like subcontractors, maybe. Maybe you get your chicken from a supplier that is a partner. Maybe you need to have a, a specific license in order to trade. So you need to have a partnership with the department that gives you that license. Um, things like um, some service providers or government departments. Those are all yeah. examples of key partnerships that aid your business in delivering those key activities. Right. And a cost structure, this is your one, Kosha. Yeah, I think maybe I can even just use the same example for cost structure. This is what like, what is the business major cost drivers. So you need to know, like I was saying, chicken making now. Uh, we know their cost drivers. Um, yeah, the, the 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 employees. There's so many employees working because there's a lot of branches. That's, so that's one of the cost drivers. So you need to understand in your business what where where does your money go. So this is what cost structure means. So you must also like okay, I spend more money on buying makeup. So I must always know that that's, that's where I must make make money. So th th that's my cost driver. And then you find these big companies or retail or chain stores. Their cost driver is employees. It's salaries. Like salaries are here on top. And then you find that logistics is right there because they just get a supplier who's got a, a truck and they they take up logistics. They just get a uh, supplier. But the, the major major cost drivers for a chicken liquid would be salaries and then would be stock. So you must understand in your business when we ask you, how can you show us your cost structure? You must show it in order that these are my cost drivers. This is where I make my money and this is where I'm spending my money. So that's how you come up with your cost structure. All right. Beautiful. Albra, I see your hand is up. You can unmute yourself and give us your comment. I also like Mulafadi. Mulafadi mentioned something that nobody... Um, uh, 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 as yeah, uh, 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 mentioned, I see eventually you must issue invoices. That is an activity. You must manage payments. That's finance. That's all the finance activities that you need to do. And I think that goes for for every business. Uh, so point perfect, but I, I feel like this is very important for people to know. Um, but also, um, there's a, 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 a somebody mentioned for KFC daily house being cleaning. That is an activity. All right, so those things you must write them down. These are my activities. This is a process of my operations. This is an operational process. This is what happens. So that if you are not in your business one day, you leave someone, you can say to the person, this is, these are my operational activities for the day. This is what happens on a daily basis in my business. So people don't miss anything. Beautiful. Thank I think Sandile also, Sandile, I know we couldn't take your comment earlier on, but I, I see you typed it in the chat saying, key activities yeah. for my event company is book the venue, book the comedians, put up posters, pay for ads, yeah. set up ticket sales. Okay, beautiful guys. I, I feel like we're getting it now. We're getting it. That's um, so nice. Great. Albra, are you able to unmute yourself and give us your comment or are we going to move on? Raise my hand quite early here. But uh, the time I wanted to talk about it was our value proposition. I know it's way back, but it was that time at this time. The fun thing. Go forward with the value proposition. Hmm. In our, in our 
manufacturing business when it comes to our value proposition we do formulate our soaps according to the person's skin type and we do formulate our own soap so we do formulate for people with psoriasis with eczema dermatitis people with dry skin oily skin and we don't sell our soaps we do give the client uh, um a little bit uh, um more into the soap so when they buy soaps we won't even just give them a bar of soap and say okay this is for people with psoriasis we do know because we did do a lot of research and we still learning um like i said our value proposition is understanding the client the needs for them thank you so much beautiful thank you for your comment all right so um up on the screen think, is a um, an example of the business model canvas. Yes, Porter. Yeah. So yeah. So this is a business model canvas uh, that was done by Uber. So if you look at the key 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 partners, like I mentioned, you know, drivers who own cars, those are their partners. Payment partners, because we have a ordering right. That's what happens. So it's either cash or it's either. Uh, uh, you use an app you know, to pay using your card. Mapping data pro providers, we can show you the route. Uh, that app there, that's, 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 a, that, that's, a, that's a client for them. You know, that's a partner for them. And then local authorities, I'm sure they had to sign a lot of stuff to get them on that road. You know, and it's licenses, it's all that for drivers. They need to also, and yeah, I think subscriptions and all that. And then key activities, platform. Oh, and a logo development, those are the activities that they need to do. Marketing to balance supply and demand, driver onboarding. So those are the key activities they do. They probably do this every hour, they busy with that. Because people are applying to be drivers, uh, people are, are being abetted. There's so many things. And the platform has always got issues. You know, they're always uh, dealing with issues. So I think those are, those are the key activities. The resources, we've got the Uber platform, the pricing and the routing. So those are the resources that they need. Uh, if you don't have the, uh, you're gonna get to, I don't even know where to get to a client to pick people. So they have to put the platform, they have to they have their pricing algorithm, they have to have their routing algorithm. Yeah. And then we've got the value proposition. Uh, yeah, yeah, the value proposition takes you on demand. Uh, you know, if you want to get somewhere now, um, you, you call an Uber, you'll be here right now. That's their convenience. On, on demand, you get them quickly. Cash free, even if I don't have cash, um, I can use my, my, my bank card uh, and it's done online. I don't have to carry cash with me. Easy to order cash and short waiting time. I'm not waiting too long. Um, hopefully, in our days, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Maybe they must look at that because with load shedding, it affects the network and then you wait. And, and you know you think he's there and he's not there <laughs> so there are there's always going to be uh, obviously issues um, in whatever uh, your business you're running and then passengers on demand uh, definitely there are passengers on demand and then easy to make additional money you can make additional money all right and then customer relationships it's highly automated everything's on the app all right the, the thank you the the you, um, there's that thing, a, a tip, you can give the driver a tip, there's so important, you can check with the driver and then channels, mobile, mobile app, the social media marketing, there is PR for them, they do ads and all that. And I think it's so nice with, um, with Uber when it comes to customer segments, I've, I've, I've seen in other countries, they've got uh, like an Uber helicopter type of thing and Uber pets, uh, some of the stuff that we don't have you know the customer segmentation that we don't have you know maybe we'll grow into that you know where you can be picked up by a helicopter and there and convert to Devon very quickly uh, and then cost structure uh, platform development salaries you know obviously the salaries being paid sales and marketing i think they spend a lot also on that uh, driver payment for the uh, the business portion that the driver gets it is a portion that uh, uber gets um and then revenue stream pay per ride charges they've got a premium uber brands they've got surge pricing so you can actually tell for this this is what we're gonna do for home with parent um the guys are gonna get a, 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 this template and then they're going to write their own uh, business model canvas uh, don't get nervous because you're still going to sit with your coaches with this model canvas so you write your own one 
and then you sit with the with the coach and the coach will advise you uh, what is what we have to fix but is and be your own bmc yeah all right let's let's um do the first quiz for today and so we've now covered the business model canvas we're going to put up the quiz team you can launch the poll um and that should pop up on your screen guys and let's get everybody to participate in the survey be way if you can get that up right there we go okay so there are four questions make sure that you answer all four questions before scrolling down to the bottom and clicking submit guys what we need today is as soon as you have completed the survey i need you to type in the chat done okay that's just so that we can monitor who has completed the survey because obviously the survey is anonymous so complete the survey answer all four questions and please type in the chat done I'm going to keep it open for about a minute or so. I'm loving the participation in the chat today, guys. Keep it up. Um, especially if we don't get to everybody to give their comments, please feel free to type it in the chat. I think that's really helping um, to you understanding the content that we're covering today. Remember, complete the survey and then just make sure you submit and then please type done for us. I'm going to read some of the comments that came through a little bit earlier on. Um, so Mudaro was saying, on my side, costs include staff costs, technology costs like FA and yeah. CRM tools, compliance like licensing fees and professional indemnity insurance, internet and telephone, transport, marketing and accounting fees. Beautiful how you've uh, um, articulated your cost structure there. Thank you for sharing that with us, um, Mudaro. Right, we need yeah. everyone to complete the survey, please. So we're going to keep it open for a little bit more. Uh, another person, oh, I think it's someone else saying key activities in her business is um, establishing relationships, content creation, marketing and client acquisition, consulting and training, and client services. Very good, thank you. Sandile was saying, um, just to dive in my business, Startup in Zanzi has multiple customer segments, about 10 distinct ones. But the main segment is entrepreneurs and early stage startups, including service providers who service entrepreneurs. We offer a variety yeah. of products, including smart up app, or sorry, startup app, <laughs> skills app, etc. Our value proposition will obviously be different for each segment, but the main yeah. customer segment, i.e. entrepreneurs, is we make it easy for anyone to start and manage a business. You see how nice and how simple and catchy it sounds. Mm -hmm. We provide all the essential elements to help start up businesses quickly, easily, and cheaply. For example, today mm -hmm. we're talking about the business model for Canvas is available through their planning tool as well, um, known as Startup and Brandy Console. Your entrepreneurs are able to do their business plan, business model canvas, marketing strategy, it's all digital. So in a nutshell, we offer a one-stop digital infrastructure in a form of apps to help people build their business anywhere, anytime. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I would say to Sandile, I mean, I like this Sandile. All you do, just make it shorter. Um, just make it shorter, especially if you're gonna do an ad or a poster or what. You, I like it, but don't make it too long. Just make it short. People don't like reading, so that even if you have it on a billboard and somebody's driving past, they just read it quickly and they they get it. You know, so I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think there's about two or three more people who still need to complete the poll. I'm going to keep, give it 30 more seconds and then we're going to move on to the next part of today's webinar. Okay, it looks like, looks like most people have completed the poll. Thank you, Ivoe. You can take down the poll. Uh, please confirm if it's down. I'm taking it down. All done. You can take it down. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm just checking if I've taken it down. Please just check if it's still up because my side, it, it has finished. Um, yes, it has. So let me just remove from my screen. Okay. Sorry guys, it's just not coming off my screen. Let's go back here. Right, right. I think before we even start with my base goals, maybe let's just recap. Um, if you remember in our last webinar, we talked about um, has goal. Uh, we talked about smart goals. Your, goal, your goals must be specific. They must be measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. But I think uh, you know you can't have your business goals without your personal goals. I think we need to align those those two together. You know, so my personal goal maybe it's uh, 
to buy a house uh, uh, in Sandton. Let me say it's my personal goal. But now to actually have that money to buy that, uh, uh, that house, I need to make sure I, I push on my business, make have great targets so that I can get there. You know, say in five years' time, if I can work hard on my business, so I've got a goal in my business and then I've got a personal goal. Inside. So you must have both, even with budgeting. When you're budgeting, you need to understand your, what is your goal, your personal goal, and, and then what are your business goals to achieve your personal goals. So please just remember, even when you're setting your business goals, make sure they're still specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're relevant, they're time-bound. And I think in business, it's even easier because you know what is your sales ticket, you know what you want to reach by end of the month. This is how much sales I want. I want to make at least 50,000 of sales. And then you make a plan of how you're going to do that, how you're going to achieve that. And then, because then when you do that, you can measure it. You know, and, 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 and obviously remember we have to be realistic. But we have to be realistic. At, at, at this goal, the goal of 50,000, is it achievable? Is it realistic? Is it relevant to what I'm trying to do? Yeah, but also at least when it's specific, it's measurable, and you know your sales target, guys, you can push. You can, you can come up with strategies to actually reach uh, that target. Yeah. All right, let's dive into business goal setting. So very important that we understand what is business goal setting. So um, planning is almost, you need to think of planning like a bridge. We stand on the one side with all our goals and our dreams. And on the other side, we can see the physical achievement of these goals. Yeah. All right. So planning is what we use to get us from here to there. Okay. And so obviously, if we lack planning, it puts our dreams, it puts our goals at risk. And so in order to achieve what we want to achieve in business, as well as in our personal lives, we must set goals. And by just setting good goals does not equate to much unless you have a plan that will actually you get those goals. And so it's great to have a plan or a goal. It's great to have a dream, but you need a plan. And that's the most important um, thing that we're trying to um, bring across today. But the most important point is that it's, it's good to have a goal, but much more important, you need a plan. And so that's why you need to have goal setting. Right, and so think about what are your goals. Maybe you want to be debt free or own a successful company, or maybe you started a business so that you can retire self sufficient and not be dependent on your kids. If you want to achieve your goals, you will have to embrace the necessity of planning. We've all heard the saying if you fail to plan, you, you plan to fail. Plan to fail. Okay, <laughs> and so very important that we, we do that. Well, so take us through the steps of, of setting goals, especially for our business. Yeah, but also just to remind people, please let's align our personal goals with our business goals. It's very important. And then let's look at the steps. I think step one, you start by setting clearly defined goals for your business. Uh, this is your desired destination. Then do a realistic evaluation of where you are right now. So this is an exercise that we did when we did our personal goals. Remember, we did some examples of someone saying, I'm going to Cape Town. So what do I need to plan my trip? So this is what you need to do. Where do you want to be in your business? In five years, I usually like the short-term goals first and then, but also just do your long-term goal. Because that long-term goal, you can work towards it with your short-term goals. All right, there's little activities that, that can get you there. I'm here now, but I can get there. All right, so you need to know your destination. Where am I going? And how will I get there? With those little short steps that I want to take. All right. Then step two, look at your current resources, your skills, your manpower, where are you? And then knowing what you have uh, will reveal what you are. It's hard, you know, when you, you, you make a, you, you're setting a goal, but you don't have the resources. It's not going to be achievable. So it's probably unrealistic at that time because you don't have the right skills to do it. You know, so I might think, okay, I don't have the right skills. Uh, you know, um, to to do people's hair. But okay, let me go get a skill. So I go buy the skill, get someone who can do hair properly, and then I bring them into my business. Now I have the resource. All right, this, this the skills are there. Do I have the location? Or oh, I don't have a location, so I actually cannot do uh, thirty people per month. You know, if my target is to do a uh, thirty hairstyles per month, I don't have a place. So I start looking at those things. So that I can achieve or set my goals for you. All right. So you still need to 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 to, to acknowledge that you are there is something that's lacking. You know, you can't say I'm I'm sick, but you don't all that to actually achieve it. 
So the step three is knowing your present reality and future destinations. Um, you must know, uh, you must now strategize the action steps that will take your business from here to there. This is the most important step in the planning process. Yeah. So this we are repeating to you because we think it's important and I feel like we, we are not planning. So that's why we did our personal goals and finances and now we're talking about business goals. And I think it's going to be uh, fascinating because you're going to be talking to your coaches about this. All right, let's move on, Darren. Okay, let's do the second quiz. Um, the second quiz covers um, the content around goal setting. Um, so if you were, you can launch the second quiz, the second poll. It should pop on your screen, guys. Uh, there will also be four questions. There we go. All right, so the, the poll is up for in the chat. Done. Also type wait if I'm about to close it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I see Tombi Tombi earlier on said quiz is closed. We might have closed it just before you were ready. We're gonna keep it open for a minute or so. Remember once you once you've completed it, please type done. Yeah. Or if you want to be like Sandile, you can add more words like second poll done. Mm, I like that. <laughs> and he's so precise. <laughs> he's specific. <laughs> That's specific and measurable. We now yeah. know that he's done. Because now two we can polls. measure it that he yeah. voted, voted twice. <laughs> Thanks, guys, those of you that have completed it. We're just waiting for complete the poll so if you can just give it another minute or so right looks like we have everybody um no mother we've noted that you have the issue there um with yours so that's it guys thank you um either way you can take down the poll okay poll is down there eh? okay guys next up we're going to talk a little bit about savings and investments because this is a very important um aspect of our businesses as well and so very very important that we do cover that and so when it comes to savings and investments we have to understand the difference between the two firstly okay and so when you think saving saving is the act of delaying something more or but while in the future so if you think about savings it's about okay i don't have it now i want something in the future the best way for me to get it is to use money to save so I'm going to save and save and save until I can acquire something or do something, all right? You could be saving even for a goal or a purchase, doesn't matter. But it's delaying immediate spending until you accumulate enough to spend on what it is that you want to spend on. Investment is different. Investment should be made for longer periods. That enables you to achieve the power of compounding and growth that is above inflation and tax. So if you think about investing, investing is more about using money that you have to make and accumulate more money okay so that's the, the fundamental differences between saving and investment but i do know our special guest is going to touch on it quite a bit more a little bit later on yeah. so save or invest <laughs> should you save or invest um uh, people always ask that question you need both um, so a bank savings account or money market uh, uh, funds are good for shorter term uh, goals like saving to buy a new fridge at the end of the year or to have very accessible money in the event of an emergency. So I think most of us do that. Um, I, I, I always tell people I don't believe in higher taxes because we pay so much. Rather, I save my money if I want to buy an asset or if I want to buy a fridge or I want to buy a TV. I usually save that money until I get to the in that way because higher patches the interest and all that you pay more if you take an installment or something you need to pay something for 25 24 months and you've been using it um and then by the time you finish it already has fresh it and i always say so so i rather save up for it and then and and buy it it's cheaper that way and then we've got stock fells to stock fells too are good uh for saving for short-term goals like christmas spending i i know there's grocery uh, stock fells and uh, there's ones where you just save and then you all distribute the money. It does help, guys. It does help because sometimes it's hard uh, when you're looking at the money. You have access to it. Um, it's very hard not to be tempted to, to use it. And then I know there's also like your 32-day notice. You can also do that, you know, just keep your money locked up so that you are not tempted. Some stock funds are also making a long-term difference in members 
lives by investing contributions uh, for longer term goals. Right? Then there's medium term goals, which includes savings for a car or a deposit for an apartment or a house. Uh, that's also uh, an important one. You can plan, you can plan this. And then long term goals like uh, saving for retirement. Um, we are getting old and it's hard. We won't be able to work. So you need to think about the saving for retirement is very important for the tertiary education for the children's investment and long time horizon. And say, ah, no, she, he's, he's only six. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still going to save. You need to save up for your children's um, um, university. We don't know much about this, but we've got an expert today that's going to just maybe motivate us, tell us how we can do this. Yeah, Absolutely. Now, you know, sometimes you see people's pictures on their bios and you think, do they really look this good in person? Today's guest absolutely does. You're going to see him in a moment. <laughs> His name is Pumelelo Bombana, and he holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree from the University of Cape Town. He's a registered equity trader of the Johannesburg Securities Exchange and a registered member of the South African Institute of Financial Markets. He joined Sunlam Investment Management as a trainee portfolio manager in 2006 and successfully completed the Sunlam Investment Investor Development Program in 2007. He then became a portfolio manager at Sunlam Private Investment late 2007. Um, a position he held until 2014, managing the assets of high net worth individuals and institutions in excess of 3 billion rand. We're going to ask him who some of those individuals were and see if he'll tell us. <laughs> Pumelelo has, um, was the executive marketing manager of coal procurement South Africa, a coal benefit, um, benefiting and coal exporter from 2014 to 2018. And he's presently the CEO at Sibeko Mining, primarily focusing on the marketing and deal structuring of Sibeko Mining for the domestic and international coal market. Nkumelelo, is that the same Sibeko Mining we see on Easy Bingo? For ourselves, but unfortunately, the work pressures are similar. Welcome, welcome. Thank um, you so much for being with us. Um, please feel free you, to Derek. meet everyone on the, on the call today. Okay, fantastic. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's well. So um, let's let's get into it. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about savings and investments with you, but let's start off by um, what maybe you can also just uh, articulate the difference between saving and investing before we get into the discussion. Sure. Okay. Well, <laughs> same thing is essentially just putting money away and and you know just um, having sort of like a cushion. Um, of sorts. Um, the difference between saving and investing is when you invest, you actually end up actually having a target for what you're putting money away for. Um, for, for, for. Um, so for example, um, you can save money in a bank um, with a bank deposit, but if you're looking to make an investment with the intention that you want to eventually buy a, a house, you'd obviously need to then invest that money or save that money in a way that it would generate some kind of good return on on, 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 on your investment to achieve your, your financial goal. So essentially I'd say that's more or less the more or less the difference. So, so savings is more or less pedestrian investments is more uh, as if you're running uh, to, to, to towards a goal if you if you understand that. Yeah, people talk about we need to save for emergencies. What what does it mean? What is emergency savings? So essentially, emergency savings is money set aside to cover any financial surprise that life may throw you away and at your business. Um, these financial surprises may cause you a lot of stress um, and prove to be very costly for yourselves and for your business. And um, some financial surprises may be uh, the likes of a medical nature. Essentially, a general rule of thumb is that um, most business advisors suggest that uh, you should be setting aside at least three to six months worth of operational expenses as an emergency fund. Um, so you don't necessarily need to um, put away like a hundred thousand rand or something to that effect of large magnitude. You start small. Um, you start by saving every every week. And then you grow it to saving every month, and then growing to save it every every quarter. And before you say Jack Robinson, you've got um, 
um, at least that three to six months worth of expe uh, operational expenses, um, you know, save the way for, for, for any emergency that, that life may throw you away. I like that. Um, now, now, another concept we often hear from people in your circles is financial wellness. How would you define financial wellness? Um, Darren, look, um, I, I'd essentially define financial, financial wellness um, as a relative measure of how well um, a person or business manages their financial habits, such as setting financial goals for oneself and taking meaningful steps to achieve them all the time, with all the aim of improving the overall quality of your, of your life, the quality of your business. Essentially, financial wellness is taking control of your money so that your money doesn't take control of you. So you need to have enough cushion to handle those kind of financial emergencies as well. Um, true financial wellness is certainly not living paycheck to paycheck, investing in high risk investments like your cryptos and, uh, and, your, and the likes, and then uh, swiping your credit cards really nearly for every single, every other expense um, and not only just using your credit card for an emergency. And then also amassing a lot of debt um, is not is not good financial wellness as well as some of those payday loans that your your cash converters um, offer um, because you know that if you, if you're living in that kind of in that in that kind of sphere then it means you're not necessarily living um, you're not really um, well financial uh, so to speak. Now now I've heard you speak more than once. You've mentioned some like a financial cushion. You've also you've also alluded to like a major life event. What is the example of a major life event that somebody could be saving towards investing for, or even just managing? Okay, so a, a major life event can be anything um, like uh, similar to your birth of a baby, for example, uh, marriage, um, or death. Um, and all these events are certainly life-changing. Uh, in the context of your business, um, for example, your business partner may have a baby and decide to a full-time parent, or, or yourself could be could be could be um, having a child, um, and uh, you know usually one would take about three months off, and and, and that's a major life event that uh, one one could face uh, in their life. Another example is um, uh, you know uh, one of your perhaps maybe one of your key employees passing away in your business, um, and that certainly would be quite detrimental to to your to your to your business. So th those kind of major life events are what. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of give an example um, of things, uh, Darren. So when we talk about investments, are you able to give us some examples of, of what good investments are? <laughs> I know it's probably like uh, so like asking how long is a piece of string, yeah. but just from your experience, if somebody's on this webinar today and they're thinking, where do I start when it comes to investing as, as an individual or as a business, what is some advice that you can give? Okay, so as essentially we've obviously we've already touched on you know an investment being um, a means of putting that capital away today with the aim and objective of growing at the time. Um, every invest every investment carries a risk with it. Um, a good investment is one where you're able to get as much capital growth as you possibly can with the least amount of risk associated with that. So there are different investments that are available out there, and they vary in risk and return. So for a conservative investor, person, um, it doesn't really want to get, um, take a lot of risk, for example, um, and or perhaps uh, at a lot um, older age um, and closer to retirement. Um, investments such as your fixed income investments are a good investment. Uh, these are fixed, uh, fixed income investments uh, such as your fixed deposits, uh, your money market investments, as well as your property unit trusts. Um, for the more savvy investor and the more risk-loving investor, investments such as shares or hedge funds yield a much higher return, but obviously that is commensurate with a lot more risk. And it's very important to con uh, consult your financial service provider before making any investment, especially a long-term one, um, because it obviously um, has uh, it bears a lot of, of, of risk for yourself. So, um, so those are the kind of investments I'd, 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 I'd recommend um, the, um, for, for, for conservative investors, your fixed income investments, such as your money markets, um, as well as your property unit trust uh, investments. If, um, and then, and then uh, sorry, just to, just, to, just to add one more thing, um, with, with, um, with 
uh, investors looking to invest in the stock market, I would essentially suggest if you obviously cannot afford the services of a stockbroker, I'd suggest you look at the likes of the Satrix, which tracks um, the, the all share index, and then at least the risk is a lot more spread out than just investing in one, one company or one share or something to that, something to that effect. I love that. We're gonna we're gonna open up the lines and get get some questions from um, the participants on the webinar today. So if you have any questions for Pumalelo, please feel free to type them in the chat or raise. If you can. Full <laughs> 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 like, I just need help with financial accounting, Schleer, by Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll say, look, I'm a phone call away, Dan. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Portia, are there any questions you have, Tom? I just see Pel Pel says she um, welcome to. Thank you, I can help find my customer. I think um, maybe. Um, while we have you here, okay. Pumelelo, what are some of the yes, things people question. should what are some of the things people should look out for in terms of risks or scams or that when they're making the decisions? Because you know, if you're somebody who doesn't know all of these things, it's so easy to fall prey to that. Yes, of course. Sure, yeah. Um, look, if it looks too good to be true, then it probably is. I'm, I'm going to be honest. And hence why when I, when I closed just now on the previous question, I did mention that, look, it's very important to consult um, as a financial services provider. Um, when you're investing, don't go at it alone. Um, in, in my experience, we've, you know, we can manage the likes of three billion rand under, under, under management, but you also lose money, you know. The market goes, goes up and down every day. So... Um, essentially, um, that's uh, yeah. I, I would really recommend you know you consult your your your, your financial services um, with any kind. Kick the tires, and um, so obviously some of the, I'm, I'm talking about um, you know markets um, and your 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 your, your, your stock markets etc. But you do find I'm sure a lot of people here. On the platform uh, that want to invest in businesses, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, and uh, when you do that kind of investment, you need to check the books. Um, you need to check the financial accounting as the, as the, as the, as the, as the previous question came through. You need to you need to you know do a full due diligence before and be very comfortable that um, indeed you're making a sound investment. Uh, you know, there obviously isn't. Um, of, of what you should exactly do, but you know, there's certain ways you can mitigate your risk to make a sound investment decision, and that is also by consulting um, professionals, um, and, and that would actually help you um, to make a sound investment. And um, yeah, to to and, and yeah, scams are scams are dime a dozen. In fact, they're on the incline and, and the increase. So um, yeah, if it, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think steer steer clear of those kind of investments where you know there isn't it isn't protected by a, 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 an ombudsman or something to that effect. So that way, you have a problem, you um, have recourse to 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 approach such bodies in the event that uh, you you do find that uh, the service that you've been given isn't what you were promised. I love it. Um, if you can just help me check if there are any hands raised. Guys, if anyone has a question, yeah. please feel free to raise your hand or to type your question yeah, in the I chat. Yeah, I think it's, it's Mulalo. Mulalo first says, please advise on the difference between personal investments and business ones. Sure. Um, okay, so a personal, inv um, a personal investment uh, is an investment that you do for your own benefit. A business investment is, a, is, a, is an investment that you do um, for the for the benefit of the business. And it's very important to differentiate the two. You know, um, nonetheless, um, they had, uh, I think it was um, Dr. Malinga on there. And uh, he was explaining that he ran into a tax problem um, because all his income that he was receiving, he was putting it in his personal name instead of in his business account. So obviously there's different Tax rates for personal and um, for personal tax, personal income tax and business uh, tax. Business tax, business tax is much lower. So, um, had he 
had he been receiving his income as a business um, and then pay himself a small salary, um, that would have been more beneficial um, for him in the long run. So it, it, it is very important to differentiate between your own personal investment and, and, a, and a business investment because your personal investment is one which um, is, uh, like I said, of a personal nature um, where you yourself are the only one that stands to benefit and gain. And um, uh, the business investment is the one investment which you would then make um, for the benefit of your business and exclusively and solely for your business to, to grow and, and to remain a going concern. Would you, say, would you say that your mindset needs to be the same when you're thinking personal and business or are there key differences that you need to consider when you are deciding on whether to invest in your, for your personal or your business? Yeah, certainly. They, they, it, it, what the what the intention of the investment is. Um, but however, look, it, it, it generally um, the, the the rules are more or less the same. The higher the return, the more uh, the risk associated with it. So whether it's for pers- whether it's for personal or for business, um, it, the, the, the the risk remains the same. Uh, if you if you are investing on a personal level or on a business level in the same. And investment. Lovely. I don't know if that makes it absolutely does. Is putting a mm-hmm. business in a trust a good idea? Somebody came up. Um, that's a question from Sandy. Um, yeah, well, it, 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 it definitely is because um, at least uh, you know when when you're in a when you are. Uh, when your business is in a business trust, it has a lot more control in the sense that there are, you know, legislature requires you to have more than one trustee on that. So it, it basically diversifies um, you, the, the, the business's risk to to operational management. We used to call that um, moral hazard in economics, where, um, you know, if, for example, you yourself um, run your business and it's not in a business trust, um, you know, your 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 the, your business's risk is much higher because then there's key in key man dependency where you're the only um uh, 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 legislation stipulates um, that you, you have to have no less than three trustees on 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 your business spread out and diversified as opposed to if it was just yourself and it's just a PTY LTD or for example beautiful thank you so much um, for being with us in Pumalelo is there any final words that you would like to give us um, to participants that are on the call today before we say goodbye to oh, you? I'd like to wish everybody luck it's like easy running a business and owning a business um, you know you, you have to you have to have the chutzpah and, uh, and, and guts and uh, I commend everybody for taking that step that initial step to decide to run and establish a business and I wish everybody all the best of luck um, uh, for, for the future of their business and I hope to see you all soon and um, read about you in your papers and um, and hopefully come across some of your products and manage some of our and manage some of our money tell us who was the who was the who <laughs> gave you the most money to manage and how much money did you make there? <laughs> I'm joking. Let's, we won't put you on the spot. Like, well, I can I can actually answer because I mean he actually essentially owns owns Sunlam. It was uh, Mr. Mutepe himself, um, and um, yeah, we we invested quite a bit of money on his behalf, and I'm happy to say that we didn't lose <laughs> um, um, his initial capital investment. So <laughs> um, yeah, he's the he's the he's the he's the he was our. See guys, so we bring you, we bring you reputable people on this webinar. We literally go and look for the best of the best. <laughs> Come and impart your knowledge. Kumilelo, thank you so much for being with us. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the, on the call today. Thank you so much for having me. Guys, so that's Kumilelo, um, who really, really, I think he, I personally learned so much from that segment. Um, and so, final announcements before we end up, um, Kosha, some reminders that you've got, some announcements. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, as always, we've got homework. Um, uh, please, this time we're just going to be completing our business model canvas, so everybody will get the sheet. Uh, and I think it's also on on your manuals. So please, please submit by the second of September 
just look at i think look at the manual and really understand what the nine blocks are all about and i mean guys we've got google just google and see how other people are doing it you know if what is customer segmentation what is value proposition so that you can write yours properly on your on your bmc template um or you can also remember when we talked about strategizer please go into their website um they've got a nice way of showing you how to actually build your canvas and then you must send your homework by the 2nd of september please 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 do not send your homework via whatsapp uh, it's very difficult to manage uh, and it's gonna be hard for if you <laughs> so please please email it to if you at driven entrepreneurs.co.za uh, but also i just wanted to your homework submissions and those busy parts are still accumulating so after this webinar we are going to be looking at um your engagement and uh, obviously we just speak about the busy parts incentives so we look at your point and then your vouchers will be dispersed because this is the fourth uh, uh, webinar and remember guys you need to at least um attend six out of eight of our webinars so that you qualify for some of the incentives and graduating from the program. Yes. That's it. Next webinar is on the 8th of September. Yeah. We're going to be talking marketing, my biz marketing. That is the goal um, and that's the, the content of that one. Um, don't forget, as Porsche mentioned, all of the homework that is due. Remember to reach out to eViewer if you have any questions. Um, and then, of course, the recording is available as well. Before we say goodbye, let's do our usual. So let's get all of those cameras on and let's get our okay. group picture done. I'm going to take my screen off quickly. Lady Pearl's got a silk bonnet there. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Did you forget to take the picture? <laughs> no, that's that's very fashionable. That's very oh, fashionable. Is it that <laughs> it's, part, it's part of the outfit. Those smiles. Um, and again, just thank you for participating in the program. We absolutely appreciate it. We enjoy, we really enjoy bringing this program to you. Um, and so, yeah. Without further delay, if you were, you can go ahead and take all of the snaps, take your pictures, guys. Everybody give us a wave. Everybody say hi. Give us a good smile. I'm getting a little video there as well. <laughs> and that's about it, guys. I think from our side, as always, um, big thank you. I think today's, today's session was absolutely amazing. I love how we were able to really dive into the model canvas. Um, and as Portia said, make the effort to really, really um, benefit you to, to spend the time to get your business model canvas done. Please don't forget to take advantage of those coaching sessions. Reach out to your coaches. They'll yeah. be in touch with how to um, schedule those sessions. And then we will see you in webinar number five happening on the 8th of September. Um, thank you so much for being here. Have a great weekend. Have a great the rest of your day. And keep smiling. Bye-bye. Thank you.